Hi everyone and welcome. So, which is better to learn for 2026? Go or C sharp? You're tearing me apart! Or at least, which is a better programming language to prioritize to learn in 2026? C sharp up until fairly recently has been the young buck, springing off the shoulders of giants like C and C++ into the arena and proving that it can lock horns with the other C-based relatively young titan, Java. But recently, two new young powerful bucks have sprung into the limelight and are finding favor with many developers. These two languages are Rust and Go. I have fairly recently been programming quite a lot with Go, and I have to admit, I am super impressed with it. Please check out this free video tutorial recently published on the Free Code Camp English YouTube channel where I talk you through building a full stack web application using Go on the back end, React on the front end, and MongoDB is used for the data storage facility. Notably, Anders Halsberg, a key creator of the C-Sharp language, recently caused a stir among C-Sharp developers because he chose Go rather than C-Sharp as the compiler for TypeScript. So Go has certainly been making waves lately. But can the hype surrounding Go be justified? From my point of view, as a developer with decades of experience, I loved working with Go. It is very powerful, yet it was clearly designed with simplicity in mind and I found it really easy with which to work. C Sharp is of course extremely powerful and very versatile, but it is more complex than Go. Both languages are strongly typed, allowing for greater performance capabilities. But C Sharp's type system is designed as a hierarchical structure where all types inherit directly or indirectly from the system.object type at the top of the hierarchy. So there is a steeper learning curve for aspiring c -sharp developers. If you are familiar with this channel, you know that I'm always a very staunch proponent of c -sharp. It's a feature-rich, diverse, and powerful C-based language, and although it is more complex than Go, it is still fairly easy to learn. It is Microsoft's flagship language and therefore a key part of Microsoft's vast ecosystem and can be used to create cross-platform solutions with ASP.NET and Blazor. And with c -sharp's seamless integration with Azure Cloud, it is great for developing cloud-native applications, full-stack web applications, enterprise solutions, cross-platform mobile and desktop applications using .NET MAUI. c -sharp can also be leveraged for building games using the Unity game engine. Azure has many amazing facilities that can be leveraged for the integration of intelligent AI services into your applications. So now, with the explosion of AI, this makes c -sharp even more attractive to learn in 2026 and beyond. So, which should you prioritize in 2026? c -sharp or Go? If you are liking this video so far, please hit that like button, and please consider subscribing if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of newly released content. Please share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do that at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. Let's firstly look at the history of Go and why it was created. Go was created at Google in 2007 by Robert Kresimer, Rob Pike and Ken Thompson. They were frustrated with long compile times and complexities in existing languages like C++ and Java. Their goal was to design a simple, fast, and concurrent language that made software development more efficient. Go was officially announced in November 2009 as an open source project. Its design emphasized simplicity, readability, and strong concurrency support via Go routines and channels. The first stable version of Go was Go 1 and was released in March 2012. This version established a compatibility promise, ensuring that programs written in Go 1 would continue to work with future versions, a major factor in its adoption. Let's discuss Go's adoption and growth between the years 2013 and 2018. Go gained popularity for cloud services, networking, and DevOps tools, powering major projects like Docker, Kubernetes, and Terraform. Google, Uber, and many other companies adopted it for backend systems. Let's discuss Go's progress from 2019 to present. With releases like Go 1.18 in 2022, introducing generics, Go evolved while keeping its minimalistic philosophy. It remains widely used for microservices, cloud infrastructure, and system programming. Go was born at Google to simplify large-scale software development. 
released to the public in 2009, stabilized in 2012, and continues to thrive as a fast, reliable, and developer-friendly language for modern systems. So what are the main key features that make Go an attractive programming language? Go's popularity comes from a combination of simplicity, performance, and strong concurrency support. Go was designed to be easy to learn and read with a small, consistent feature set. There's no inheritance, no complex type hierarchies, and minimal keywords, making it approachable even for beginners. So like C-sharp Go is strongly typed, but it does not carry the learning curve burden of a complex hierarchical type system that C-sharp has. The Go FMT tool enforces a single consistent code style across all projects. Go's standout feature is built-in concurrency using Go routines, which are lightweight threads managed by the Go runtime. Go routines are much cheaper than OS threads. Channels allow for safe communication between Go routines without explicit locks. This makes Go ideal for parallel processing, network servers, and microservices. High performance. Go compiles directly to native machine code, giving C-like speed. The Go compiler produces a single statically linked binary, so no runtime dependencies are needed. Its garbage collector is efficient and continuously improving for low latency workloads. Powerful standard library. Go includes a rich standard library with packages for networking, web servers, file I.O., testing, and cryptography, all built in. The library emphasizes clarity, correctness, and practicality, reducing the need for external dependencies. Built-in tools. Go provides excellent developer tools out of the box. Go FMT for formatting, Go build, Go test, Go run for building, testing, and running code, and Go mod for dependency management. This tight tooling ecosystem improves productivity and consistency across teams. Static typing plus memory safety. Go is statically typed, catching many bugs at compile time. It avoids pointer arithmetic, unlike C and C++, preventing common memory errors. Yet it remains flexible with type inference and interfaces for polymorphism. Cross-platform and cloud-friendly. Go compiles easily for multiple operating systems and architectures with simple cross-compilation. It's heavily used in cloud-native environments, powering tools like Docker, Kubernetes, Prometheus, and Terraform. Fast compilation and deployment. Go was designed for large-scale development at Google, so it compiles incredibly fast, produces single binary executables, simplifying deployment, no virtual machines or dependency chains. In short, Go strikes a rare balance between simplicity performance and scalability, which is why it's a top choice for servers, cloud systems, and modern backend development. So we've looked at the features of Go and why you may wish to choose Go over C Sharp in certain cases. So when would you choose C Sharp over Go? C Sharp has a rich ecosystem and mature framework, .NET. C Sharp runs on the .NET platform, which has decades of development and thousands of mature libraries. The .NET ecosystem supports web apps, ASP.NET Core, desktop apps, WPF, WinForms, mobile apps, .NET MAUI, cloud, and even game development, Unity, all from the same language. If you want full-stack development or tight integration with Microsoft tools, c -sharp is a natural fit. So c -sharp might be best for enterprise apps, internal tools, and complex systems that need a lot of built-in functionality. Object-Oriented Programming, OOP, and Advanced Language Features. c -sharp offers deep OOP capabilities, inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation, interfaces, and more. It also supports functional programming elements like link, async await, tuples, and pattern matching. Go intentionally avoids complex OOP features, which keeps it simple but limits expressiveness and certain designs. So C Sharp might be best for projects that benefit from complex abstractions, reusable class hierarchies, and heavy data modeling. Cross-domain flexibility. C Sharp isn't just for web or backend services. It's used in game development, Unity, desktop apps, mobile, and IoT. Go, by contrast, is primarily focused 
on back-end systems and command line tools. So C Sharp might be best for teams that want one language for multiple domains, web, games, and enterprise. Strong tooling and IDE support. Visual Studio and JetBrains Rider offer world-class features, refactoring, debugging, profiling, and live analysis. The .NET CLI and NuGet Package Manager are powerful and deeply integrated. Go's tooling is fast and consistent, but it's intentionally minimal and lacks the advanced IDE features c -sharp developers enjoy. So c -sharp might be best for large teams or enterprise environments needing robust debugging and productivity tools. Type safety generics and language power. c -sharp's type system is richer and more expressive than Go's. Full generics since long before Go 1.18. Nullable types and attributes, reflection and dynamic types. These features enable more complex data modeling and compile time guarantees. So c -sharp might be best for projects with sophisticated business logic or large data structures. Enterprise and Microsoft ecosystem integration. c -sharp has deep integration with Azure, Active Directory, SQL Server, and Microsoft 365. Enterprises already invested in Microsoft tech stacks benefit from smooth compatibility and long-term support. So c -sharp is best for corporate environments or applications tied to Microsoft technologies. Runtime and performance optimization. The .NET JIT compiler and runtime optimizations can produce very high performance for long-running apps. ASP.NET Core benchmarks are competitive with Go web servers. And c -sharp allows finer memory and thread control when needed. So c -sharp might be best for scenarios needing advanced runtime control. Mature async and parallel programming model. c -sharp uses async await for asynchronous operations, which are clear and easy to understand. It also has task parallel library, TPL and P-Link for parallelism. Go's Go routines are simpler, but less expressive for structured parallel workflows. So c -sharp might be best for applications requiring complex async workflows such as UIs or multi-step I.O. pipelines. And you might choose Go when you need high performance and fast setup. You want simple, scalable concurrency. You value simplicity over complexity. You're building cloud-native or DevOps tools. You want fast build times and easy deployment. You prefer a lightweight, opinionated tool chain. You need safety without complexity. So which language should you prioritize in 2026, Go or c -sharp? I have to say that I absolutely loved using Go and Gingonic for my backend code in the full stack web application that I created in this video for Free Code Camp and MongoDB. The combination of React, Go and MongoDB is a powerful tech stack, yet also comes with elegant simplicity. And on the flip side of that argument, I also love being able to create an entire full stack web application using just C Sharp. Minimal JavaScript, C Sharp on both the front end and the back end. So Blazor, C Sharp, and ASP.NET are also excellent technologies to use for creating full stack web applications. From the perspective of a developer looking for employment, my research tells me that you can actually, in many cases, make more money as a Go developer. However, the .NET ecosystem is huge in comparison, and there will undoubtedly be a lot more job opportunities in the c -sharp and .NET space. So as often is the case in technology, one has to make trade-offs. A simple solution is to make yourself as educated as possible and just learn both c -sharp and Go. As to which one to prioritize is up to you, based on your personal goals and preferences. For a software company that is already heavily invested in the .NET ecosystem, it would make sense to nurture c -sharp skills as a priority, but perhaps in certain cases, Go can also be leveraged, for example, for high-performance microservices. One of Go's key features is its simplicity, which makes it fairly easy to learn. And if you already have c -sharp skills, Go is also C-based and strongly typed. And therefore, as a c -sharp developer, it should be fairly easy to learn Go. I personally found Go very easy to learn. And as Halsberg chose Go as the compiler for TypeScript over other languages, including c -sharp, the language he and his team created, because Go had many similarities to TypeScript. So it was efficient to port the previous TypeScript compiler written in 
JavaScript TypeScript over to Go. Go was also chosen for its high performance capabilities and perhaps the most important feature that made Go in this case the best choice was its concurrency handling features. Go's Go routines and channels make concurrent programming simple, efficient, and safe. It handles thousands of concurrent tasks with minimal memory overhead. Go is ideal for network servers, real-time systems, and high-throughput backends. So in conclusion, you might choose Go over c -sharp when you need a lightweight, fast, and highly concurrent language for building scalable backend systems or cloud services. Go's simplicity, quick compilation, and built-in support for concurrency make it ideal for microservices and performance-critical applications. On the other hand, you might choose c -sharp when developing applications that require a rich ecosystem, strong object-oriented features, or seamless integration with the .NET framework, such as enterprise software, desktop applications, or complex web apps with advanced tooling and libraries. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of newly released content. Please share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do that at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will all be greatly appreciated. Please let me know in the comments section which of these two languages you are going to prioritize in 2026, Go or C Sharp. And please let me know your reasons for your choice. All comments are of course welcome. I love reading your insights. It would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at Gavin Lon Digital. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.